Welcome to my YouTube channel today, we are diving into a beautiful story. Please like and subscribe. So this is one of the most uh, strange stories of conversions ever. And it is narrated that uh, Hamza was a well-known archer. He was a well-known hunter. He would go and he would go on long expeditions. So during one of these trips, it so happened that the Prophet wasallam was in Mecca and Abu Jahl met him close to the mountain of Safa. And Abu Jahl was in a foul mood that day for some reason. And he cursed him like he had never cursed him before. Verbally, he didn't touch him, he just kept on cursing him and his ancestors. And the Prophet ﷺ remained silent, not saying one word back. Until Abu Jahl basically got tired and went on his way. And the women of the Banu Hashim got extremely insulted because they don't care Muslim or non-Muslim, this is your insulting our tribe. So when Hamza returned, some of the women began to basically uh, taunt him. What type of leader are you of the Banu Hashim when your own nephew is insulted? and no one stands up to defend him. So he said, what happened? So they said, Abu Jahl stood there for 15, 20 minutes, however long, just haranguing him, just insulting him. And not one person stood up to defend him. And he said this, and he said that, and they narrated all that he said. And Hamza's blood began to boil. And he asked, did the other people see, was this a public insult? Because it's a matter of pride for him. They said the whole of Mecca saw it. And so he basically lost it. And he marched to the Kaaba, still with his bows and arrows and hunting uh, equipment. And he marched straight to Abu Jahl and took his bow and smacked him across the face with his bow. Caused a huge gush of blood to come out. And he said, how dare you curse my own nephew? And then he didn't even realize what he was saying and he blurted out. And I too am a follower of his religion. He didn't plan this. It was just anger. And when he hit Abu Jahl like this, and Abu Jahl was sitting down and he was standing up, the Banu Makhzum that were around him stood up to go and defend him. But Abu Jahl said, leave him be. For wallahi, today I cursed his nephew like I never cursed him before. And then Hamza returned home, confused, dazed. What am I going to do now? I don't know if this is the truth or not. And he made a dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he said, Oh Allah, you know that I am one of the leaders of the Quraysh and I have now said something that I don't know. I cannot take it back. It's too embarrassing to take back. So if this matter is true, then cause my heart to be guided to it. And if it is not true, then cause me to die right now. And he spent the most miserable night of his life tossing, turning, thinking what to do. And the next morning he went to the Prophet ﷺ and he said, Oh my nephew, this is what happened yesterday. So the Prophet ﷺ stood up and began talking to him, admonishing him, telling him about Islam, exhorting him, convincing him of La ilaha illallah until finally after that conversation, Hamza said, I testify that you are a truthful person and you're speaking the truth and now I don't ever want to return to the paganism or the religion of my forefathers. So when Hamza accepted Islam, this was a big boost for the Prophet Sallallahu because he finally had support from the elders of the Quraysh. And when Hamza converted, Ibn Hisaq says, they had to tone down their animosity. They had to tone down the irritation of the Prophet and the Muslims. A few days later, according to one report, three days later, Allah followed it up with another boost. And that was, of course, the conversion of Umar ibn al-Khattab. Ibn Umar, Umar ibn al-Khattab's son, Ibn Umar says that the Prophet had made a dua to Allah. The Prophet had said, Oh Allah, bring glory to Islam with one of these two men who is the more beloved to you, either Abu Jahl or Umar ibn al-Khattab. And Ibn Umar said, Umar was the one who was more beloved than Abu Jahl. How did he accept Islam? It is narrated that once Umar ibn al-Khattab went during the evening and Umar was, as most of the men were, he loved to drink. So he went out at night having a craving for drinking. He was young at this time, 25 years old or so, where all of the young men would go and drink. And he found that none of them were there. He went to another house, then for some reason they were not there. He went to the wine cellar, even the wine cellar was not there, the one that they get their, their wine from. So he said, let me just go to Tawaf now. Get my mind off of this craving. So he went at night to the Kaaba, and there are no lights there, it's a dark place, you know. And he heard the Prophet ﷺ reciting Quran, all alone, in the middle of the night basically, right? Praying in front of the Kaaba, subhanAllah. And so Umar thought to himself, now is my time to beat him up, do something. Nobody's here, all alone. This is my time to basically get some revenge and, and you know, do some dastardly deed and nobody's gonna see me. So he quietly crept up behind the Prophet ﷺ and 
Obviously, he's reciting Quran. What's going to happen? He stopped and he began listening. And nobody knew he was there. Even the Prophet was oblivious. He was completely lost in his uh, recitation. And Umar is, uh, is narrating the story himself. It is narrated in Muslim Imam Ahmed. He's narrating in the first person. And he said, I stood behind him. And he began reciting Surah al haq al haq al haq ma adraka wa ma adraka al haq kathaba thamud wa adham al qari'ah. And he said, فَتَعَجَّبْتُ مِنْ تَأْلِيفِهِ I was amazed at the rhythm, the sequence. And while the Prophet is reciting, this is an amazing story, he began to think to himself, where is this coming from? So he said, هذا والله قول شاعر This is, wallahi, this must be the statement of a beautiful poet, just like the Quraysh are saying. And as soon as he thought of this, Surah Al-Haqqa says what? وَمَا هُوَ بِقَوْلِ شَاعِرٍ قَلِيلًا مَا تُؤْمِنُونَ So then Umar says, okay, it must be a kahin. It must be a sorcerer. What is the next verse? وَلَا بِقَوْلِ كَاهِنْ قَلِيلًا مَا تَذَكَّرُونَ Right? So Umar says, where is this from then? What's the next verse? تَنزِيلُ مِنْ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ What if he's inventing it? وَلَوْ تَقَوَّلَ عَلَيْنَا بَعْضَ الْأَقَاوِيلِ لَأَخَذْنَاهُ بِالْيَمِينَ ثُمَّ لَقَطَعْنَا مِنْهُ الْوَتِينَ Basically, it's a conversation that Allah is having with Umar ibn al-Qattab through the Prophet ﷺ and the Prophet ﷺ doesn't even know about it. Because he's just reciting the Qur'an and Umar is just thinking thoughts to himself, right? What if this is a poet? This cannot be the po poet. You have no uh, thinking. You're not thinking through. Well, what if it's a kahin? It's not a kahin. Don't you see? Well, where is this from? It's from Allah Azza wa Jal. Tanzeelu min Rabbil Alameen. What if he's inventing it? If he were to invent anything and ascribe it to us, we would hold him by the right hand and cut off his jugular vein. So basically, every doubt Umar is thinking, Surah al haqqa is responding back to at that very time. And Umar ibn al-Khattab said, that was the first time Islam entered my heart and took over it. He didn't accept yet. And he didn't do anything to the process of, and he went back home. Then of course the famous story happened that all of you are familiar with. That one day the people of the Quraysh were sitting around and Umar was with them. And Abu Jahl once again began his tirade against the Prophet ﷺ. And Abu Jahl said, this man has done more to insult our fathers and gods than anybody else. He has cursed our religion. He has said that anybody who worships idols will be punished and, and going to hell. This means our forefathers. He is making fun of our forefathers. Who will finally rid us of this man? Abu Jahl says, by Allah, anybody who succeeds in doing it, I promise him 100 camels, red and black, the choicest colors. And I'll also add 100 uqiyya pouches of silver. So Umar now got greedy. And so he went back home, he took his sword out, and he walked with an unsheathed sword, as you all know the story. And here, the riwayat of Ibn Ishaq and others say that a number of things stopped him along the way. And he heard voices with poetry, with uh, eloquent Arabic, telling him, that what are you doing? This is just a man saying la ilaha illallah. So basically there, there seems to be some supernatural events happening and he kept on ignoring and just uh, not thinking about it. Until finally he passed by Nu'aym ibn Abdullah al-Nahham. And Nu'aym ibn Abdullah had just accepted Islam but he had not told anybody about it. And he saw Umar with this anger, with walking with the sword up and down the streets of Mecca. And he says, where are you going? Umar, what happened? And so Umar ibn al-Khattab said that enough is enough. We have been cursed too long and our ancestors have been ridiculed. I'm now going to kill this man, Muhammad. So of course, uh, Nu'aym panicked. And so Nu'aym said, have you lost your mind, O Umar? Do you really think that the Banu Abdi Manaf, the tribe of the Prophet the Banu Abdi Manaf, the Banu Hashim, will allow you to walk on the face of this earth after you kill one of their own? You're not gonna live any, any longer. And if you really wanna do something, Go back and fix your own family first. What do you mean, fix my own family? Don't you know? No, what do you mean? Your own sister and your own brother-in-law have accepted Islam. When Umar heard this, he became even more enraged because this is now a slap on his face. This is insulting. And so he marched to his sister's house in anger. And as he came close to the door, he heard the recitation of the Quran. And so Umar barges up, began slamming on the door. And he hears scurried sounds that Khabab is being put in the closet. And uh, Fatima took the Quran and basically almost sat on it. She put her skirt on top of it. Come in, come in. What are you doing here at this time of the day? What was this noise I heard? This humming and drumming. What was this? She said, no, no, you didn't hear anything. She goes, by Allah, I know what I heard. And rumor has reached me, or I know now that the both of you have accepted Islam. I know it has been told it. And they began to deny it. And Umar is already enraged. And he took a step forward to basically punch Saeed, his brother-in-law. And when he took this step forward, Fatima stood up to try to stop him. The blow landed on her forehead instead of his. And when he punched her, her lip basically burst open and the blood began to flow down. 
And when this happened, the both of them became enraged. And they said, yes, so what? Do it as you please. We have accepted Islam. And we believe in the Prophet ﷺ. Now when he saw the blood and he saw the sincerity, really that's all it is, the courage from both of them, again his heart softened. And again and again we see Umar had a harsh side and he had a soft side. And so when he saw his sister bleeding, again he calmed down. And he said, let me see what you are reading. And his sister got worried that, what do you mean? We don't want to give, because the Quran needs to be respected. We don't want to give you the Quran. He goes, no, I swear, I am not going to do anything except read the book. And Umar was one of the few who could read and write. So she said, as you know, that you are a mushrik, you are a pagan, and you are not allowed to touch the Quran until you have purified yourself. And so Umar said, let me quickly take a ghusl. He went to the corner of the house where they took it in. He took a ghusl and he came back and he read Taha, as you know, and Islam then entered his heart. And he knew that this was true. And so he asked uh, Sa'id, where is the Prophet ﷺ now? And so Sa'id saw that his eyes had completely calmed down. He's, he wants to convert. Where is the Prophet ﷺ? Sa'id said, he is in the house of Al-Arqam. So the Umar ibn Khattab then proceeded to Al-Arqam's house. The sword is still in his hand because he hasn't let go of it. And he goes to the house of Al-Arqam and he bangs on the door of Al-Arqam's house. One of the Sahaba stand up to go see who it is. And he looks through the holes of the door and he sees Umar with the sword. And he comes back in trembling. Says, Ya Rasulullah, Umar ibn al-Khattab is outside with a sword in his hand. And Hamza, of course, had just accepted Islam. He's in the room as well. So Hamza says, let him in. For if Allah wants good, he's going to accept Islam. And if Allah wants other than this, then the very sword that he's holding will be the end of him. And so some of the Sahaba went to the door, they opened it up, they escorted Umar, they held on to his arms, two people holding on to his arms, right? He's a big guy. And they escorted him to the Prophet Sallallahu And he sat down in front of the Prophet Sallallahu Ibn Ishaq says, the Prophet held on to his collar and dragged him closer to himself and said, Ibn al-Khattab, what are you doing here? Why did you come here? The Prophet has no fear. And he says to him, for by Allah, if you continue in this path, Allah will destroy you with a punishment. And this was when Umar said, Ya Rasulullah, I came to accept Islam, believe in Allah and believe in you and testify in the truth. Here the Prophet himself said, Allahu Akbar, so loud that everybody in Al-Arqam's house knew that Umar had accepted Islam. And this was when after the conversion of Umar, they for the first time publicly went to the uh, Kaaba and they prayed uh, publicly for the first time and they said that uh, the riwayah says they were around uh, 40 people and the conversion of Umar along with the conversion of Hamza it most likely occurred in the month of Dhul Hijjah of the sixth year of the Da'wah with these two conversions the Quraysh really felt threatened